Thank you for listening to Lone Star Community Radio. This program was broadcasted and recorded live from the LSCR studios in downtown Conroe, Texas. Lone Star Community Radio is supported by listeners like you. Donate and sponsor today. For more information on getting involved with Lone Star Community Radio, contact us at lscrstudios at gmail.com or visit us online at www.irlonestar.com. All right, welcome back to Audience of One with Andrew and Dick. Wednesday, 10 a.m. on Conroe's 106.1 and 104.5 and IRLoneStar.com. Of course, if you're into the podcasting, you can find us on YouTube, Facebook, Apple Podcasts. I'm your host, Andrew. It's the longest intro. Oh my god, I get tired of doing it. Yeah. Jeez. Well, I was, I was thinking to myself, is he forgetting everything that he's saying right now? So he's just scrambling. I, like, no, like I literally go to Facebook's bed. Facebook's a word. Facebook is a word. <laughs> we could say that, right? That's that, that counts, right? Oh man, no. I I just I, we've got so many different platforms, and I just oh my, my gosh, got to rattle yeah, through. It's silly. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm thinking we should probably do Spotify, Stitcher at some point. I don't know. I'm too lazy to probably set that yeah. stuff up, but maybe someday. It's the spam mail I'm afraid of. <sighs> it, it definitely has increased yeah. for me since I started the show, yeah. no doubt. It happens. So how's the uh, how's the Boy Scout uh, badges going? I know you're you're sleeping outside to uh, uh, to earn this. How's that yeah, going? Yeah, the uh, the n- next thing I'm doing is I was in a competition this weekend with the fine arts. So they had all these people oh, playing yes. the piano, vocal, violin, and I said I wanted to try. And these people have been doing it for 20 years since they were born. <laughs> Right. And they wouldn't let me on stage. No. Yeah. The nerve of them. I know. Gosh. Wow. So that's my next badge. Okay. Nice. Nice. Man, there were so many crazy stories that happened this week. So many things that I wanted to bring to air. Yeah. I, tra- I traveled again for work. And of course, anytime you travel, there's a lot of things that you can observe that are probably things that people can relate to that I really wanted to bring to this show. But you know what? All of that is going to have to wait. Fair enough. Because as it's promised, nice. la- yeah, as promised last week, yeah, we have our first audience of one guest. Really? Yes. So let's please give a nice audience of one welcome to actor Steve Larkin. Morning, guys. Morning, Steve. Morning. How are you? So, uh, Steve, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, why the heck are you here? <laughs> You asked me. Oh, that's right, I did. That's right, I'm sorry. <laughs> we played golf with my son, and yeah. the next thing I know, your call is, hey, what are you doing Sunday? Yeah, I'm bothering you. Yeah, I think actually I have the undistinguished uh, merit of being the last round of golf uh, you ever played. Uh, After you played with me, you said, that's it, it I'm it, done. It, it, uh, it may be, you uh, know, I've had... Uh, let's hope not. L- you know, I'm old, <laughs> and stuff keeps breaking. I hear you. You know, had I, had I been to California to pick up the motorhome when we when we had played golf, mm-hmm. so it was after my my uh, triple bypass. Yes, I, I heard about that. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, it's a rough go. You've had a rough go of it since the last time I saw you. Well, yeah, uh, a buddy of mine and I flew out to uh, California, and I bought I bought a motorhome out there, and we drove it back. And the last day, I'm cleaning the windshield of the motorhome. And Man, that doesn't. Uh-oh. Yeah. That doesn't feel right, you know. So, we got back on Thursday, and I was supposed to go in for a checkup on Friday. I go in for the checkup, and the doctor comes in afterwards, and uh, he said, "Well, Mr. Larkin, we can't let you go home." Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that's never something. That's, that's never a good never thing good. to hear. Yeah. And he said, "Have you ever heard of the term the widowmaker?" Uh-huh. Oh. Geez. And I said, yes. And he said, I can't believe you're still alive. Oh, my goodness. And things got worse. <laughs> yeah, when the, when the doctor gives you that kind of uh, diagnosis, I think you say whatever needs nope. to be done. I, I can't believe that. Oh, absolutely. You didn't ask for a second opinion? Yeah, I do, because that wasn't time. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> wow. Exactly, you know. Well, you know, and I'm... Well, I'm I believe you, Doc, but... <laughs> yeah, come on. We... we 
we need to go to another route. Let's just see. It. Really? Let's just see. It. You know, and I've got another golf game set up. Yeah. You know, we need to figure and this it, out. You know, I don't I'll, have time for heart surgery. I no. just well, they, you boy, let me tell you what, you make time. Yeah, I bet. I bet. And so anyway. Well, that, thank you for joining us. It was my pleasure. Um, so, Steve, if you don't recognize him, um, I would say you're probably most known for, at least here recently in the last several years, the Hallmark Channel yeah. and playing Santa Claus. And, and, and which, by the way, you cannot name your child that, just you, in case you're wondering. I heard that the other day. Yes, that you probably heard that on our show. Yes, I did. Right here. <laughs> so, just because you play Santa on TV does not mean you can go out and name your children that. No. No, and I have played a doctor on TV, but you don't want me to operate on you. <laughs> right. No, it's not. No. So tell us a little bit about that. It's, uh, I mean, I guess I don't know exactly. Maybe, you know, let's step back just a bit here. We know that I, j I just let the cat out of the bag and, and, and said that you uh, were on the Hallmark Channel of Santa Claus. But let's step back a little bit and just how did you get into this game of acting to begin with? I know it's probably a story that you have told a lot, but and the audience uh, of one here has yeah, not heard it. So uh, uh, tell us a little bit. I think it's pretty interesting. Well, it's it's uh, <clears throat> definitely interesting, I guess. Uh, I had a friend of mine years ago named Randy Wilson. He was from Bryan. Very talented man. And he went to, he was on Broadway for 25 years. Wow. And he decided, I've had enough of New York. And he came back to Bryan and started a, a theater company. And uh, we went to the same church, and every Christmas, we our church had a big, fancy deal, you know. And, mm -hmm. and I was always the narrator, you know, because you turn the lights out and give me give me a microphone, and I am the voice of God, you know. <laughs> I, I noticed that about you. <laughs> as soon as you started talking. I... Yeah, right. Uh -huh. And uh, so we were having a rehearsal. One, Randy was doing some drama thing for the, the show, and I asked Randy, I said, well, so Randy, what, what play are you going to do this spring? Cause, and he said, well, we're going to do uh, – Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. And I said, ooh, man, I was born to play Big Daddy. Ha, ha, ha. Now, you, at this point, you hadn't done any acting per se never, yet. Just in the my voiceover. Life. At never the in trailer. my life. But you knew what Cat on a Hot Tin Roof is? I, I did, as a matter, you know, and uh, I loved the movie. And uh, Elizabeth Taylor at her most beautiful, perhaps, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know. Oh, my gosh, that white dress was fabulous. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, about two months later, the phone rings and it's Randy and he said, I said, Hey man, what's up? He said, what are you doing Saturday? And I said, I don't know. What do you, what do you want me to do? And he said, I want you to come down and, uh, audition for a cat on a hot table. I said, really? I was kidding, man. I was just, you know, a little rehearsal fooling around. He said, no, he said, I don't want you to play Burl Lives. That's not the way you don't have that. I want you to read the play, read the play. Don't just watch the movie. So I read the play and I realized that Big Daddy was a combination of the two most important men in my life was my uncle and my grandfather, both of them larger than life. So the theater was 25 miles from my house. And I don't know if I should say this on, but I bought a six pack of beer and <laughs> calm the nerves maybe a and little? i had drank four of them on the way to the theater <laughs> <laughs> somebody else was driving it's okay that's right yeah <clears throat> and uh so we get in there and everybody who is auditioning for anything is all in the is in the audience you know ordinarily you go to a casting director and it's you you and the producer and the casting director so, so everybody sees your stuff on this one so he calls my name i go out on stage and he hands me a script and i said what do i do <laughs> I don't know. How long ago was this, by the way? What year would this, this have been? This was been 1997, probably. Okay. 96 or 97. Okay. So um, I said, what do I do? And he said, go be this guy. And I thought, what's the worst that could happen? You know, uh, are they going to hate me? You know, so what? So I just... Let it rip. <laughs> <laughs> and got the part. And I thought, okay, well, this, this is cool, but I, I, it touched something in me. I, I don't know what. Yeah, that's... Now, my oldest son and I, <clears throat> and Jamie, if you're listening to this, I love you, boy. Uh, since he's about 16, we had been like this mm -hmm. as quite often happens. He, at this time, he was like 21, 22, going to school in Austin. 
and he was coming over for a performance. And I knew he was in the audience someplace, but, you know, the lights, you can't see. And besides that, when I walked down on stage, Steve Larkin was back there. Big Daddy's in the house, and that's all I... Transformed it into was, character. It was amazing. Because I didn't know what was... I really... So there's a part in the second act where Big Daddy and his son Brick get in this awful argument. And I guess it was because in the back of my mind, I knew Jamie was there or something. Anyway, I got so mad at this young man that was playing brick. I grabbed him by his collar, and I started crying and screaming my lines at him. And this kid gave it back to me. Wow. <laughs> and we basically we had a fight on stage. We go backstage. I mean, it is dead silence. Nobody, no hoo-ha and nothing. And I'm just... Sitting there with my head in my hand. So anyway, we go back on, do the third act. We come out to take our bows. I'm the next to the, next to the, take my bows. I take my bow and up out of the audience, my son jumps up. And the next thing I know, he runs up on stage. Wow. And he grabs me and he said, Daddy, I love you so much. Wow. That was it. You got, you were, you knew you had something in you at that point. I, well, I, no. I did not. No, just I the ju- fact that it was that powerful. I on just stage. knew that. Wow, you this stuff will this stuff will change your life. because yeah. it did at that moment. Wow, you that's am- that's amazing. That is a phenomenal story. And and I guess at that point you were in teaching. At yeah, point? I was principal at Bryan High School. Principal. Wow. <laughs> and, and and in a way, if you think about it, teaching is you kind of. Are acting in are you certain kidding way. me? That's where I got all of my training. Yeah, so I in, think that you a, kind of go in hand a in hand. ninth grade science class. It was perfect because you know ninth graders, you can you, they're a little older now. You can sure. you know, and uh, I was a big ham anyway. No way. Yeah, <laughs> and they used to. My kids always used to say, "We don't know what Mr. Larkin is going to do next." And yeah. we don't, so this was a natural transition for you. Okay, so you, you play the co- uh, cat on a, a hot tin roof, your big daddy. It unlocks something in you. This is amazing. You're like, wow, I, I didn't know I had this in me. Where did it go from there? This is the late 90s. Yeah. Um, at yeah. what point did you say, hey, maybe I want to do something more with this? Because didn't, you didn't get paid for no, that role. That's community oh, theater. No, 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 no. So, uh, yeah. No, there's, you know, it was just something that I, I knew that after that for, that I wanted to do this. I had no idea about doing it professionally, you know. So, I can't. I tell you how it happened. And I came home from work one day. My wife was the principal at A and M Consolidator, and she says, uh, "How'd your day go today?" I said, "Great. I quit." <laughs> what? Wow. And I said, "I'm tired of working with people who don't like kids." And she said, well, what Which do you... Which is kind of important if you're yeah, a teacher. Kind of, I think, well, especially if you're going to be a good teacher. Uh, that, see, there's the yeah. thing, you know. Yeah. It's not, so she said, well, what are you going to do? And I said, I think I'm going to sit on the dock of our pond and drink beer full time. It's good work if you can <laughs> get it. If you can get it. <laughs> what, what year would this be? This would have been 2001. Okay, so a few years after your, yeah. your first yeah, yeah. Uh, stage performance. Yeah. Uh, have you done anything since then or in between? Oh, man, I did. Oh, my God. One one year I did five plays. Okay. Uh, you know, so, so after that you started oh, acting. Okay. Absolutely. And did a lot of musicals and stuff, you know, stuff like that. All local to the, yep. the Huntsville area, Brian? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. And um, Randy was a gifted, gifted director, and, and they were – we had at one point we, in that little community theater – we had six people on stage that went on to become professional actors. Wow. In Bryan, Texas. How does that happen? Right. You know? Uh, so anyway, it just... And Becky looked at me and she said, why don't we go to Hollywood? Oh, hold on. So she's the one that suggested oh, this. Oh, yeah, man. I had... Oh, my goodness. Talk, talk about supportive right there. I, I assume this was one of these well, scenarios knew, where you were... She had a gold mine. <laughs> That's right. She's going to ride like, coattails to Hollywood. Yeah. No, no, no. That is no. interesting. I would assume it was one of these things where you said, honey, um, I've got this <laughs> acting bug, and I've quit my job. Because you said you quit your job. I, I assumed it was to, to go out and act. No, it was to no. drink beer professionally. And she yes. said, no, I don't want you drinking beer professionally. I think you need to go out to Hollywood and act. Let's focus a little bit more. You're still young. You're still young. <laughs> you can in a drink sense. beer in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. But uh, we need for you to potentially get paid for this now. Yeah, so I, I was 56 years old. 
And I and I told her, I I said, why would we go? And she said, let's see if somebody will pay you to be an actor. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> yeah. Don't be silly. They don't pay high school principals from Texas to come to Hollywood and be an actor. And she looked at me and she said, are you scared? Uh-oh. The she spousal was, challenge. She was well, it's funny you talk about this, and I we're going to put a link to your IMDb in the description, and you see how many roles you've had, and it's kind of neat, like because you've been doing it for a while. Yeah. So you have experience, and then this this story you're telling leads all the way to that typical Hollywood story, and if there if there is a typical Hollywood story, yeah. you know, holy cow. Yeah. So I I she said that to me. And it just, it didn't make any sense to me at all. So I, for three months, you know, I wore out the knees and a pair of blue jeans praying over, you know, and every time I'd throw, you know, and I'd ask the Lord, well, what, and he, I just would get this feeling where he was up there saying, no, I want you to go out there. I want you to do it. Wow. So one day I called Becky into my office at the house and on my computer screen, I had a beautiful white railing. Pacific Ocean in the background and a glass of red wine on that railing. And she said, oh, my gosh, that's gorgeous. Where is that? And I said, that is from the balcony of your condo in Malibu that I just leased for a year. You'll see. We'll go. I won't get any work. We'll come home. <laughs> At least you had a plan. You sure. did, did you did you sell you the house? Just get here? off a bus and be like, "Oh, I need to get headshots." <laughs> yeah. Where do I get, do I get headshots? That's kind of it, you know. Yeah. Did you sell the house here? Or you kept it? No, we kept it. Okay. Uh, my good. son and his family moved into it, and yeah. we took uh, her car, my truck, one guitar, and some clothes. That's it. We we bought it. That's yeah, not a long term plan there. But at least you brought the guitar along. We did. We did. You're going to have something to do while I'm sitting there waiting for the phone to ring. Sure. So you get to Hollywood, and um, I guess you start auditioning, I'm, I'm supposing, right? You're looking for things in, at that time probably in the newspaper, Exactly. I'm okay. No, exactly. There's a, there were no smartphones pub, then. There's a publication there that, that, uh, that you get in all the auditions for independent films and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. So um, the first year I did 11 films. Didn't get paid for a single one of them. They were all independents. Okay, so so you out there make 11 films and knowing that you're not getting paid, I suppose at this point it's just to get something on your resume to help you out? I just want to know roles? how to make movies because it's totally different from a, a play. Okay, so this was just, you were chalking this up to just straight up experience. You didn't care at this point if you were getting I paid. I wanted to know how, you know, the, the, my first... Sounds like one, audience of one. One of my first jobs, I, I, we were <laughs> sitting around forever... And I asked the guy, I said, what are we waiting for? And the guy said, well, we're waiting for the electrician to come move that stinger. And I said, what's a stinger? Yeah. Glad you asked it, because I was about yeah. to. Yeah. And he said, well, it's that extension cord. we got to have an ex uh, uh, a union guy move it. Where does it need to be moved? Well, just right over there. I said, heck, I can do that. <laughs> Don't touch it, Mr. Larkin. Oh, Don't my touch it. gosh. Yeah. You you getting in a junior uh, a union guy stuff now, and I it's the only time I'm surprised I, they didn't pay you though. Usually when there's a union involved, they have some type of. Well, that particular one, I played uh, Andrew Carnegie in Time Cop Two. Okay. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Well, the first Time Cop was fantastic. This so. was a different guy though. Okay. This I know <laughs> Jason something Lee. And uh, so I, I did. I get, I get actually. I got. I got paid seventy five dollars for that one. Wow. Yeah. What did you do with all the cash? Um, bought beer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Sounds I. Like. So we've got your eleven films that you've done. Um, in the I guess, first year. <laughs> yeah. In the first year, that to me that sounds successful, even though there's no money coming in. At this point, is your is your wife getting a little weary? Or she's still enjoying the Hollywood Are you kidding me? lifestyle at this point. I made her a I made her a business card with her picture of her. She's asleep. She's very fair skinned, like you, redhead, and she's asleep in a lounge chair on the beach like this, and it said Becky Larkin, woman of leisure. <laughs> How did that go over? <laughs> well, it went over real, real well, but we had a seven hundred square foot condo. Mm-hmm. 
And we were together for the first time in our lives, 24-7. That's true, because both of you were teachers and working, and so, yeah, full time. Yeah. So she needed to take some leisure time out on the beach, I assume. Boy, but enough <laughs> is enough. I finally, after about six months, went to her. I said, honey, one of us is going to have to go to really work. I'm either going to have to start getting a lot of jobs, or you're going to have to go to work because right. I'm going to kill you. Well, good thing that didn't happen. It did not, and she got a job as a principal. And, and oh, wow! Yeah. Okay, so you guys were establishing residency at that point. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds like, and then, I, so what was your very first paying gig, if you even remember? I still like the idea. She's like, "I'll just be a principal here." Well, she has a business card that's a woman of leisure. Yeah, I've got to get me one of come those. On. It's it's hard to go from woman of leisure to principal, I would yeah. think. It, it, well, you got to be good. You have to, you have to, she's a well. Those California schools are a little bit more relaxed. Right, she can be both at the yeah, same she, time. She can, she can do both. Wow, let me tell you, that's just wow. <laughs> oh, that was. I love it. It's it's a different it's a different world. Well, we have listeners in California, so we don't want to upset them. Yeah. So. Well, I, you know, California. I mean, he lived there. He's. I, I love right, the place. Right. He worked there. We'd still be there, except Becky wanted to come back to Texas, you know, and I was... The damn kids. I was, I was, yeah, I was sure that I had an Academy Award right around the corner. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know, and the, and the awards are tonight, and I don't think you're going to hear my name. So, uh, yeah. They are tonight, aren't they? Yeah. I told you. Oh, that's right. I, yeah. I, the Oscars have disappeared off my radar about three years ago. Well, they're just, Longer ago than that just, for me. Oh, I think it was when the Green Book won. I was like, okay. Yeah. I, eh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah they, they have well award shows in general have not not just for, yeah. for movies music as well daytime tv it's they're just not what they used to be and i think it's just because there's too many other things there's too many other options but yeah we don't need to go on that uh, <clears throat> diatribe I suppose, but anyway but. yeah uh so yeah uh the first one may have been a movie called portal to hell <laughs> Yeah, well, that's, what I, that's what I'm saying. I'm looking at your IMDb, and the titles of these movies are hilarious. Yeah. Like, it says the first one you're in, it said uh, it's about a stripper. At church. At church. Let me tell you what. This is a fab. It's actually been on, uh, on I think it was on uh, HBO. But a great story. Uh Based on a true all, story, all black cast except <laughs> the Sunday me. morning stripper. Sunday morning stripper. The Sunday morning. You yeah, played yeah. Mayor Rimbolt. Mayor Rimbolt, played by Bruce Bruce. Bruce, you know the uh, big old black comedian, funny as heck. And then Ronaldo Ray, who used to be on uh, Sanford and Sons. Okay. These guys. Anyway, story of this this guy comes from Detroit. This preacher to this little bitty t church in the South and. Things are not going well at all. The congregation is drim, uh, dwindling. One day, Sunday, <laughs> one of his <laughs> this is great. members, Sister Wilma, as the choir is singing, Sister William, uh, Wilma gets the Holy Ghost and starts taking her clothes as off. As one will do. As one will do. Yes. I mean, she became... Guilty. Filled. Became filled with the Spirit. Well, suddenly, as you can imagine... Church attendance skyrockets, <laughs> and uh, so my I Crisis played, hasn't been tried more often at yes, some of the, the churches around here. I played uh, Mayor Rimbold, and I hear all this stuff. So I show up with my entourage, and we see this, and uh, the whole congregation starts taking. This is behavior unbecoming. I'm yes, assuming indeed. that's the yes, the, the tone you took, right? I yeah. ended so, up dancing in my tiger stripe uh, boxers. So when you get a, when you wow did you so you must at some point have been taken over by the oh, spirit as well. okay I, the whole congregation we all got up well, there and well you can't blame her what, what I love about these kind of movies is no one really thinks like, that's the whole idea of a movie it's supposed to be fun and like this isn't an everyday thing right and what I love is the idea of you going in getting the role and you're like all right we're working and then you come home and you tell your wife about this <laughs> movie you're in <laughs> and you're like oh there's a scene where I'm in my you know polka dot underwear. And we're in a church. And I'm dancing up on the altar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she's like, 
What context? Like <laughs> what? Uh, you know. Just remember, honey, you wanted me to come to Hollywood. Yeah, that's right. It, you. We are here now. Yeah, that's this be, is what I do. I dance in my box. I could be sitting on my dock with a cold one in my hand. <laughs> yeah. It can make everybody think that's all I do is drink beer. But that kind of stuff's <laughs> funny to me, where you try to explain a story to someone else. Who's because not if involved, you're not there, you, you just just gonna like what? Are make your eyes about? roll back yeah. in your head. You know. Espe- but, especially yeah. like the the time and effort that to make a movie. Or to put on a play. It's just like everyone's so invested, but people who are not are like, okay, cool. That was a fun Saturday. And like, they're gone. Like, And these are not even a short film. These are not cheap products. Yeah. Right. You know, it takes a lot of money to do this. Mm-hmm. But uh, it was, uh, that was a, uh, one of my favorite. We filmed in Compton. I had to get there before sunup. And I always had to park quite a ways away from the church. And I had my hand on an item in my briefcase as I was walking. I know through. what item you're referring to. Yes, indeed. Mm-hmm. It's a Snickers bar. That's right. Sometimes yeah. he gets hungry. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Mm-hmm. See that? Uh, <laughs> Felt was a well, lot of hungry. I yeah, think that's, that's... Well, let's talk a little bit about the movie-making world. Is like, You don't get a trailer. You don't have an escort. You know, those kind of things. But then certain movies, it's like the experience is just worth it, that. Yeah. And then other movies, it's like I'm literally getting a paycheck. I'm just going to show up here on time, and then hopefully we get out on time. Hopefully. Well, you, what you, you better to show up and be ready. you got to just show up, know your lines, and be ready. I am no longer in a hurry for this because I've, once I became a – a, a member of SAG and everything, I realized, you know, you get so much money for eight hours and then time and a half for 10 and then double time after 12 mm-hmm. and at 14 hours golden time is triple time. Man, I don't care. Drag it out <laughs> right. as long as you want. Yeah, and I bet you a lot of actors are that way too. Oh, yeah, so these productions end up dragging on much longer than they're supposed to. Well, if you're waiting for someone to move a cord. Right. Well, that's true. That's I true. Mean, you're kind of. <laughs> this is why they put a pitch clock in baseball, by the way. Yeah, yeah. You, you bring a book. <laughs> Just you know, whatever. No. Do something. Play, bring your guitar. Well, let's. I want to talk about your a couple of Hallmark Hallmark movies. Uh huh. And one thing that's I love because I love reading about productions of stuff. Mm-hmm. So, uh, like for example, there's a great book out there. I forget, I forget the author, but it's about the production staff of Hercules and Xena, and how when they first started that in New Zealand, how they're able to turn around four episodes a week with four different directors, same sets. And how they like really did it, and it made me think of Hallmark does that too. It's like I feel like they film like six movies in one location, and then like it, they, it's like oh, the mayor's house happens to be the husband's house in the next movie, you know, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they may move a few pieces of furniture yeah. around, you know, but uh, those uh, they have a uh, Larry. Oh gosh, what was the, what's the guy's producer? I can't think of his name. Big anyway, he has a whole. Uh, production facility in Simi Valley, uh, city streets. I mm-hmm. mean, you walk down the street, and it's an amazing. You're in a real city, mm-hmm. but you step around the corner, and that building, right. that building is this thick. There's, so there's, those little dreamy Hallmark towns aren't real. Is that what you're telling me? Uh, well, oh, no. it's, it's all in your. Oh. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like it's it, they have you're they crushing got, me they here. They got it. They got it down. They, got <laughs> they it do, down. and they they produce so many movies yeah. every um, year, and it's it's they've got it down to a formula to where they can pump these films out. I'm sure. Well, if you if you watch it for Christmas movies, it's a boy and a girl, and they were in love. And yeah. and it's the same thing. It's over and over. And there's over nothing wrong thing. with that. But no, there's nothing it's wrong. A classic with, story. There are people like you either you either love them. Or just oh, right, you know. They, well, need, they need to throw curveballs occasionally. Like, do like Romeo and Juliet in the snow, and then the end, everyone's dead. Like, what is this Hallmark movie? Well, I, I've, I've said for a while what <laughs> they need to crazy. do. If they're really looking for ratings, they'll do just their normal formula. Everything's going according to plan at the very end. They're about to have their first kiss, and he just pulls out a knife and goes. Yeah. And, oh, he just freaks out. Yeah. And what and just then, happened? And then screen fades. Yeah, screen phase fades. One. Right. <laughs> People would lose it, but Hallmark would definitely get some ratings well, there think, because it would be I, so I, far I out of what they normally they do. I want to say they did something like that with Lifetime <laughs> with Will Ferrell and, a, and another comedian actress where they were in like a Lifetime thriller, but it was Will Ferrell. And like you couldn't take it serious because it's Will Ferrell, but it, the whole plot was a serious plot. 
But my favorite Hallmark movies are the ones, if you remember back in the day, they used to, like Hallmark didn't have a channel. They had uh, the Hallmark movie on Mondays or something right, like that. Right, they'd have specials. Right. Specials. So right. you actually had some legit actor, like big production. It wasn't like the like Christmas movies where they're making 20 of them a year. Right. And now I think the last one I saw was the Christmas train. It had like Danny Glover for like five minutes. Wow. And then it had uh, McDermott. Uh, I forget. And then Brad Paisley's wife was in it. The lady from, uh, I don't know. I'm just going Oh, she on. was in a sitcom yeah, it's, about a decade ago, yeah, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those movies it. are always great because you see they spent all this money and it's just like, this is the same thing. You could it's just, just, yeah. just done 10 more other movies like this and I think that's why they don't do those. I forget they call them like Hallmark uh, Legends or something. Right. Whatever. You know what I'm talking about? I, yeah. I, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. yeah. And... There's, there's some big actors in it. Well, I, I was very impressed with with the, the the two that I was that I've been in. They, I mean, this, they were first class productions. Yeah. And it was, well, how about uh, how about this? Let's hold on to Hallmark here till after we take a break. I think we're about at the halfway point here. If I'm if I'm right here, we're we'll, getting we're getting to the drugs after this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we're gonna hit it in the break and the then dark come back. side of acting. Yeah. Well, I figure we'll <laughs> we'll talk a little bit more about the Hallmark, and then I also want to hear a little bit about your time in Hollywood and some of the neighbors that you had. I think you've got some pretty uh, uh, interesting neighbors and friends that you made during your time, and we'll indeed. we'll cover that. So uh, we'll take a little break here and come back. Uh, uh, audience of one. You are listening to Audience of One with Andrew and Dick, right here on Conroe's 106.1 and 104.5. Also available worldwide on YouTube, Facebook, and Apple Podcasts. All right, welcome back to Audience of One with Andrew and Dick. We are still here with our guest, Steve Larkin. When we left, you were uh, about to start telling us about your your experience in the Hallmark movies playing Santa Claus. I can't imagine why you were I, cast I, I for Santa either. Claus, by the way. I don't way. either, you know. It makes no uh, sense to it, me. It makes no, absolutely <laughs> <laughs> no sense at all. Um, so, tell yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Um, obviously, it's a role that you probably auditioned for and um the, the first one i i did i i auditioned uh for it and uh never never heard anything so uh i got on my uh harley and i was gonna uh take a trip up uh, pacific coast highway to seattle and you know it's just such a beautiful why drive. do you seem so much cooler than pat <laughs> Like all of a sudden you're telling you're like oh I was got on my Harley and you know I'm just doing this beautiful ride. Pat is a mutual friend of ours, yeah. by the way, who yes. happens to be Steve's son. Yeah. So if you don't know who Pat hey, is, Pat, Pat, what have you done that's so cool? <laughs> like, do you have a Harley? Probably not. Yeah, he has a truck with a, a pink piece of tape on the side. Were you it. Santa Claus? Sorry, Pat. Probably Pat. not. <laughs> sorry, Pat. Sorry, I, Sid, or, sorry to interrupt you. I was just, well, what are you he, talking he about? He can handle it. Like, I guarantee you, he can handle it. Well, you know what? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. When you first started talking about your history with, like, in Brian being a principal, and then you talk about it's almost like you, you have another life that you did when you started this career of acting. Yeah. It's, Does that make like? Because if I no, because yeah, I feel like the story would be totally different if you were 20 and you discovered acting. Oh, I'm so glad that I didn't know that I could do this. Is it? Yeah, yeah cause it's, because it is. You gotta understand when I go in out there and, and, and for an audition, an audition, I'm auditioning with guys that I've seen on TV and yeah. in the movies my whole life, and they're going out for the same parts I am. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you go out there and you're 20 or 25 or whatever, you're waiting for that one break that'll make it. And, and if you go out there like I did when I was 56, yeah. You're still looking for that one. Doesn't matter. You know, yeah. and and so how long do you want to hang on to it? Well, you, know? I, you you bring up a really interesting point, Dick. Thank because you. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> it's the one time yeah. he hasn't yeah. ever done this. It's one yeah. time. Mark it down, folks. Uh, yeah, right. Let me write that down. Um, that you know, obviously, movies require different types of roles: mm-hmm. old people, young people, good-looking people, ugly people, blah blah blah. Ugly people, huh? Yeah, there's a role for you. Yeah, potentially. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and myself. Business is good. <laughs> so do you think that perhaps uh, the fact that you started uh, later in, in a career as opposed to 20 years old, that that sort of dictated maybe some of the roles that you would have got, including like Santa Claus and how different this maybe would have been if you discovered the acting bug at 20? Yeah, and I, of course, at it, it, it 20, I, 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 this, this was a no-risk thing for me. Mm-hmm. Becky had retired from teaching. I had retired. We move out there, and we both got pensions. I, you know, I'm. Well, see, that's what I, I'm thinking right. to myself. It's like, no, I, how many people have done what you've done? I feel like there's not that many people that would say, you know, what we're going to totally change the trajectory of our later years in a sense. Like we're going to Hollywood. Why are we going? Because I want to be on a, in a movie. <laughs> Except that I never said that. Well. <laughs> Well, I meant more of just like when people hear it, they're like, I was the one saying, why are we going to Hollywood again? (laughs) Well, yeah, you needed needed to be reared, you know, you had to be like, let's go. And uh, because most people are like, let's just go to this island and retire and be on your dock and drink beer. But my my daughter, Stacy, when she, of course, you know, when you're from Bryan, Texas and College Station and your principals at the high schools and all of a sudden they, where's Mr. Larkin? Well, he's in Hollywood being an actor, you know. And people would. He's ask. lost it. Yeah, <laughs> he's and a to, hippie. He's a hippie. See, well, that well. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> the, people, but Stacy says somebody asked him, "Your parents are in Hollywood?" Yeah, and Stacy said, "Yeah, my folks aren't afraid of anything." Yeah, but we just we're too stupid to know. Well, they're smart. They, they y'all arrived after the Me Too movie. No, yeah, <laughs> if I had known how difficult it was, I wouldn't have gone. Well, I, you know what's so bizarre with that is you see, because I, I, I've been for a lot of friends with the community theater here. We have two mm-hmm. two community theaters here, and a lot of them do they do like a it's almost like a try like a, they're a part of a band. They'll be here for a year, and then they'll save money, and then they'll go out and try to get like go to Atlanta or go like to the uh, hubs to get jobs, mm-hmm. and then understand. they'll come back and they'll still act, and then they'll go back out there. And it's it's almost like the industry has changed completely. It's a, it's a tough gig. It's where, a tough gig, man. Especially where you're, there's not like a central location anymore. Because that was the benefit of being in Hollywood. That's where everything was made. So it's like, oh, I can do commercials. I can do theater. Like, yeah. Theater. I could do sitcoms. I could do specials. I can do movies. I can do. But it's now, now you're going to Compton for a movie, and you probably had to pay your way to go over there. I and, you know, got in my truck and. See, that's what I'm saying. Up, loaded up <laughs> and went to Compton. Well I, I, well, I was growing up, I made movies, and that was one of my... I'm like, sorry, what? I made little little movies, you know. All right, that's I was having a segment. Yeah. There you go. Well, I, uh, that's the first thing I learned was how hard it was to get people and how much you really have to cater to people, and that's what I learned because I, I did part-time jobs on, like, HGTV shows here locally, and then I was like, you really have to have a lot of money to make this run smoothly. Yes, if you don't have any money... You don't know who's gonna show up. Don't know if they were like, I'm here for the sandwich. Well, you better that's make sure. Right. Better make sure you have the sandwich here on time. That's right. That's right. So, because that was part of my job was to get the coffee and everything. Because you know those guys that they're they're the extras that work on these movies. Yeah, they're making. Well, when I was out there, they were making fifty seven dollars a day plus lunch, and their big thing of the day was. Guess what we have for lunch today? Yeah. Because that represents a pretty good portion of their salary. Well, that's exactly. That's, why. that's exactly right. You know, and it's just we're getting tuna today. Yeah. And when we did uh, three day old tuna, tuna yeah. sandwich. When we did Charlie Wilson's War, those of us actors, whatever, we're having, and we're literally having king crab legs and and prime rib. And the, the charcuterie boys, bless their hearts, are up, up at a food truck trying to get a sandwich and a glass of iced tea. Mm, the commoners. Yes, indeed. Should, should have been an actor. That's right. <laughs> should have been with the big boys. That's right, yeah. <laughs> so you got this this role of Santa Claus. You said you missed the, the first audition. You didn't get it. But the second audition, I guess, came up for Santa. Well, and you it, said, well it, I'm going to try this. I was... Um, or your agent, I so I, yeah. So I, anyway, I was on my I was on my Harley. I, I was oh, headed that's right. towards. That's right. I forgot about the Harley. Yeah, I did story. too. Uh, I was headed towards Seattle, and I had stopped in Cambria by Hearst Castle, and I was sitting on the beach watching the elephant seals. They're incredible. And my phone rings, and it's my agent. Oh my God, where are you? Where are you? 
I just left there yeah. two hours ago. I'm up at Cambria sitting on the beach. I'm being a man of leisure you, at the moment. What? Thank you very what? much. You know, I'm on my motorcycle. She said, no, no, you got to come back. Why? You booked a you booked a. I, I booked this Santa Claus movie. And you don't remember doing it? I don't. Or you got your dates mixed up or something? I, no, I, I never knew. They just called and said, oh, okay. I want this guy. I said, well, oh, they picked you out. You didn't even have to audition I didn't for this audition. Well. They had wow. seen my other thing. Mm-hmm. They said, well, let's use this guy. Awesome. So I said, oh, crud. All right, now so, I got to work. So I got to get, <laughs> get back on my Harley. I said, well, I'm going to take the back road. All right, I'm not getting back on the air. So I get on, turn off this little uh, two-lane blacktop, and then it turns into a one-lane blacktop, and then it's a one-lane dirt road, and I stop. I said, yeah, I better get out of my map. I, <laughs> and there's a herd of elk over here. You know, I am not in L.A. Mm-mm. I hear a car coming, and there's a Jeep coming down the road, and it's the mailman. And this guy is... About my age, got a beard down to here, really long hair, covered up in tattoos. And I'm there on my looking at this map. And he said, hey, man, I, he said, are you lost? I said, no, nah, you got to have some idea where you're going to be lost. And I said, I have no clue. <laughs> he laughed and, and he said, well, what do you, he said, what do you, he saw my Texas license plate. He said, what are you doing out here? And I said, well, I'm an actor. What about you? I got to go back and do a part. He said, oh, what's the part? And I looked at him. I said, well, actually, it's one they should have hired you for because you look just like the guy. It was Santa Claus, you know. <laughs> so he gave me some directions. He drove off. And like three minutes later, he turns around, comes back. He hands me this card. He said, hey, we're having a party. Uh, my club is having a party. Why don't you come? He said, it was a motorcycle club. <laughs> See, I told you. Cool. Yeah. Right. Well... <laughs> Uh, so I called a buddy of mine because he had heard of this club. And I said, well, what, can you find out about this? And I said, yeah. And he called back in five minutes. Oh, my God. That was Tony. He is the founding president of this particular club. And, oh, my God. And he's a mailman. And I'm thinking, who? So we show- Am I getting in over my head here into something? Yeah. Uncharted so, waters. Well, yeah, I show up at this place. Uh, it's a public place, but we show up there on Sunday for a ride. And this guy comes up to my buddy. He said, hey, is Steve Larkin here? And he said, yeah, he's right next to you. He said, hey, I'm Dean. Tony couldn't be here. But he said that I am supposed to take care of you. And, I'm, and I looked at Things Nick. Things were about to get weird. Yeah, I looked at Nick and I said, let me tell you, I, I can see where this is going. But, buddy, I am too old to be somebody's prospect. <laughs> shine, shine, oops, shining, shining your bike and getting beers for you. No, no, no. I'll, I love you guys. It's nice. We'll play. We'll ride. But no, yeah. I, this is this is not my style. No. Wow. That's what they intended it for you to be a prospect. Crazy. He really, I mean, he really liked me, and he re- wanted re- me in his club. But must you, be. There's Hard. only one way you yeah. can get in the club. You got to be a prospect oh, and work your. I guess so. I thought this was going to be a fun story where, like, you get a tattoo or something, and then well, you I, get a roll out of it. You're like, yeah, oh, hey, well, we, no, no. He, I, he I would have had a roll. Like, yeah, I did. It would have been. I did get role. a tattoo, but all I got was a staff infection. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, this guy's you know the head of casting over here. He brides with us. I'm like, oh, wonderful I networking s- on the Harley. Yeah. Well, not that. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So we really are going to talk about drugs. No, right. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, because yeah, and that was one of these uh, this particular clubs, and I will not say the name uh, unless they come looking for me. But that's how they finance their stuff. All right, there you go. So Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, you were on your way back and got recruited, and so I, by a biker gang. I, yeah, and. <laughs> I mean, come on, you, you can't make it. No, you really can't. You can't make that stuff up. I just yeah. want to know the thought process of that guy. Like, oh, this guy would be a good prospect. Like, I would... Why well, is... Tony, and I, we just really hit it off well. Well, yeah, well I get that, and, but then... And, and, yeah, I don't... I guess that's the way his world works. It's like, hey, I we don't... get new people. I can't be their friend unless they're a prospect, and they go through the, uh, go through the process. Uh, All ages welcome. Yeah, right? Yeah. So. Fresh blood. Yeah. Yeah, here, let me see some of it. Yeah. So would yeah. this have been the 2018 Christmas at Pemberley Manor, or that, would this have been rekindling Christmas? 
I'm reading. Uh, no, the actually, the, so that was three. So there was also uh, help for the holidays. Oh, I missed that one. That's right. Oh, so this is help for the holidays. Time. Help for the holidays. Okay, yeah, that's 2012. Well, well, let me ask you okay. this because looking at our IMDb, I, it says I you're credited with 26 one. roles. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's more. Yeah, and that's just. The yeah, internet's and, always well, they wrong. Don't have, do they have any of the theater stuff on there? No, I think no. it's just I. Well, they short have, movies and they uh, have a weird TV. rule where it's like you have to you can't be like the man. You have to actually have a character name, I think, hmm. to be credited. If they, but if they, does, if you scroll down, does it go down to theater? No, it just, no. You know, unfortunately, probably, probably forty or fifty of those. It says actor. And that's it. So yeah. you definitely get uh, recognized as being Santa. I know when we were on the golf course, there were people coming up to you going, oh, my gosh, this is Santa Claus. This is Santa Claus. Obviously, that role that was, must that, have been a defining role in some way. It, oh, yeah. And, 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 and fun and to play. For, it, it is. You know, for a long time, and I'm stupid, but I wouldn't let my agent uh, submit me for Santa Claus because I didn't want to be you typecast. Cast. I knew that's where you are going, yeah. yeah. And then I've, one day I realized, that oh, Santa Claus care. money spends just as good as That's right. the murdering rapist that right, I had to right, play, you right. know. Uh, oh, that's so funny. it was, uh, yeah. I bet your wife appreciated the transition to being Santa Claus instead of the murdering rapist every time. Unless it's bad Santa Claus. That was, a, yeah. now, the, and I, the bad guys are really a lot of fun to play, but it's. It's Taxing. Like, it's like I did a lot of uh, horror movies. I love making them, but I can't watch them. Yeah, I, I, I'm in it. And I can't watch it. I know, I know it's fake, but I can't. I don't want to mm. watch it. So when you were out there in Hollywood, I, I know you mentioned this a little bit um, last time we were together uh, about some of the the neighbors and friends <laughs> that you had out there in Hollywood. I, I imagine you've met all kinds of interesting people, but I think you actually were friends with some pretty interesting people that were your neighbors. Well, yeah, I uh, I used to walk the beach with uh, Ryan O'Neill. And uh, we long would, walks on the beach with Ryan O'Neill. That's, that's really sweet. And I thought it was interesting because we'd always talk about. He knew I was a former teacher. We'd always talk about raising kids, and Ryan is not known for his parenting <laughs> skills. Um, both of his kids, but anyway, uh, <laughs> we'll leave it at that. He was a wonderful, nice guy. Uh, my next door neighbor, uh, literally we looked at, uh, off our bal balcony onto his home, our 700 square foot place looked over his 15,000 square foot three story mansion. Mm -hmm. That would be Mr. Dr. Dre. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So I think you had a run in with him one night, right? I, I, I did. Uh, Actually, it was in the afternoon. I was um, laying on the beach, working on my tan, and a bunch of people came down from his house. And I raised my head, and it was him and his brother and kids. Going, when you say him, you mean Dr. Dre? Yeah. Okay. And uh, so he's, they've got this fishing pole, and they clearly do not know what the heck to do with this fishing pole. Okay. So I finally... I just I get up and I said, "Hey, y'all, y'all having some problems here with this fishing pole?" And he said, "Yeah." He said, uh, "I never did too much fishing in Compton." <laughs> <laughs> well, I okay. I said, "Well, what you got here is a spin cast. Here's the bail, and I showed him how to do it. Made a few practice casts, and here's how you put the the bait on." Oh, thanks, man. I said, I, and so they got it out there, and I went back down there, went back over to my blanket and laid down, and uh, not too long I hear yikes screaming, and they, oh, look, 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 and they they got a fish. And, All right, that's cool, you know, and I open my eyes, and again, and Dre is holding it up like this, and he's looking over at me. Okay, well, what do we, we got it. What do we do? <laughs> now what? Now what? Exactly. So, that sounds like me. Yeah. 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 So I went over and extricated the fish from the hook, you know, and all this. And now you're best friends and you exchange mm -hmm. Christmas presents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of place. Becky's out on the balcony working on her stained glass and she hears Dre next door say, Hey, Snoop Dogg, move your car, fool. <laughs> she looks out. Here comes old Snoop Dogg. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Was that your only run in with him or did you have a. Uh, uh, actually, I actually, he had a 4th of July party one time uh, that 
The area of the beach next to his home for about 100 yards was empty, and it was owned by Mr. Sterling, who owned the uh, Clippers. Oh, yeah, Roger Sterling, yes. Yeah, and uh, he rented that for the 4th of July, and two days ahead of time, these 18-wheelers started pulling up on the Pacific Coast Highway and unloading, and they, on this space, they set up three gigantic Arabian tents with Persian rugs on the floor, golden chandeliers, big overstuffed couches on the beach. And and so the first tent you go in, there is Dr. Dre and his wife holding court, greeting guests. The second tent is uh, unbelievable food and all this kind. And the third tent, of course, is the booze tent. So my son Jamie and I and my agent were down walking on the beach. We were watching all the comings and goings. And, and I said, man, I sure would like to drink some uh, Dre's booze. <laughs> yeah, just come just on. because it's his. Yeah, exactly, right. right? And he said, Daddy, there ain't no way. And I looked at him. I said, hold my beer. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> and I go up there. And he, you know, he's got one of these guys standing at the entrance, and I went to him and I said, walked by the guy. I said, Man, Dre shows a hell of a party, doesn't he? he said, yes, sir, he sure does. And I walked in, and the guy said, What can I get you? I said, We have a tankeray and tonic. He poured me a tankeray and tonic, and Jamie and Terry are out there, and I hoisted the <laughs> glass to her, to So him. you did the equivalent of just holding a clipboard, you know, it's supposed to get you in anywhere. You just acted like you you've been like, there. Uh, you knew what you were doing. Been there a like thousand you, times. You know what you're doing. Santa, excuse me, scan, Santa. Santa, Santa, Santa excuse me, actor coming yeah, here. Actor, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. So I, I didn't realize that Dr. Dre would have a big house in Hollywood. That's shocking to me. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. And, Billionaire uh, now. Good. When degree. he's uh, when he's working the the tunes over there, it'll, it'll make the light fixtures in your house vibrate. I'll tell you for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I bet. Well, that is really cool. Well, and, and Snoop Dogg too, huh? Snoop Dogg and Courtney Cox and Jennifer Aniston down the, you know. Uh, wow. Well, that your period of living in Hollywood. How long were you there? Eight years. Wow. So one year goal. Turned into eight. Yeah, isn't and, that crazy? And and like I said, you know, Becky Becky just wanted to go home, and I get it. And uh, so we we came home, and I said, "Look, I went to Majors. Can I go home?" He said, yeah, we'll call you. And they do. So yeah. you're still uh, still answering yeah. the phone for yeah. potential roles and things. Mm-hmm. And I imagine uh, COVID probably did a number on things in terms of acting and trying for well, roles. Well, in right, a way, that time period. In a way, because it helped guys like me, because at the time and even still. Auditions suddenly became all video. Mm-hmm. You uh, out there, you know, it's a big advantage to be in the room with the casting director. Sure, you can get feedback, but if everybody has to send in a videotape, then you've leveled, leveled the, the playing, playing, field. playing field with everybody. So it's so we. You know, auditions are kind of interesting. Um, it seems like it's the only interview for a job where you're actually doing the job. You know, because when you're applying for a job, you're interviewing, it's tell us your strengths, tell us your weaknesses, and you're you're just, you know, BSing with people. But when you're actually trying out for a role in acting, you might actually even be reading a part of the script doing the actual oh, job. Oh, yeah, you are, re- you yeah. are reading, reading the script. Yeah, that's yeah. very yeah. different from any other um, Yeah, because they will send you job photocopied sheets of the sections mm-hmm. that they want you to do. And then you have, and here's the, the worst part is, you know, you'll get a, call at six o'clock in the afternoon and check your email there's an audition for you you need to have it in by 11 tomorrow morning wow so do you uh aspire to continue doing this or is this now are you kind of winding down i'm kind of winding down but you know if a a, a good part comes up yeah sure sure he seems flexible (laughs) right (laughs) not well, when I called him the other day to, to confirm the, the uh, interview here today, I said, I asked him, did I, did I catch you at a bad time? He said, no, I'm just out in the greenhouse. I'm like, oh, man, he's got a greenhouse. So what are you, what are you growing out there? You got a, a hobby on the side? I don't know. Just vegetables. Oh, just vegetables. Just okay. Ve- just vegetables. Wink, wink, nod. Well, 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 we are in Texas, you know. <laughs> just because you lived in Hollywood for eight years. I, I didn't know. I didn't know. I, 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 
So you uh, you do uh, woodworking, he's actually and gardening. Really, he's actually really in that club. <laughs> you're right. He can't say he's anything. A, he though. can't yeah, say anything. Right, right, the motorcycle guy. Yeah, I went crazy. Yeah, I still um, love making uh, furniture and and uh, gardening and See, riding that it, hog. It's and, kind of weird. You have all these hobbies, and you seem to be good at them. How do you have? Like, did you even raise your kids? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, Pat turned out all right, but. I mean, yeah, and it's just stuff like your wife uh, must be amazing. <laughs> I don't know how it happens. I know I got started in woodworking. I was on my tractor, and I was uh, uh, smoking a pipe, and I'd set it down on the fender. And I turned and did something, and I drove off. And, ah, crap, where's my pipe? I looked back and I had run over it and oh. mashed it to smithereens. I said, "Well, I bet I can make one of those." Well, as it turns out, so I started making pipes and selling them. Mm -hmm. I get a couple hundred bucks for these things on. Oh wow! wow. So, yeah, yeah. They, no, they were. Nice. I was ordering fancy woods from <laughs> Asia and all this kind of stuff. So I told my wife, I said, "You know, there's a thing called an uh, Alaskan chainsaw mill that you hook these things up to your chainsaw and you can cut planks." You know, and I said like to do that and she said well how much is one of those and she I said five hundred dollars she said you can't spend five hundred dollars on that oh yes, well in the mean in the meantime I was hired to host the Texas Forest Products video show or whatever you know and we had axe throwers and all oh, these. Oh, yeah. but there was a guy there selling sawmills so I can't, you, you know where this is yeah. going. I did not buy a five hundred dollar Alaskan chainsaw mill. I bought a ten thousand oh dollar Hudson. My, it was there. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was there. there. Hands on, available yeah. for purchase. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh wow. So, so you, you've gotten your use out of it, then. I you bet. remind me of my friend Kurt, where he has some land, and he always has like he bought a backhoe, and I was like, "What is a backhoe?" And when I see it, I go, "Why do you have this?" Like, you can't even, like, this is what you see construction people doing. Yeah. What are you going to be digging up? He just wanted, whatever I want. yeah, whatever he wants. <laughs> and that, whatever needs to be done. And you have this sawmill, I can just do whatever I want. That's, I just, I love doing stuff like yeah. that, you know? And uh, Do you I'm, still do any of that kind of stuff? Is oh, it part of your, all the time. Yeah. All the time, yeah. See, that's what kind of stinks having, like, an interesting dad. Because it's like, can I ever be as interesting as him? Well, the thing is, you know, you, especially when you get old and retired, man, you better have a lot. To, you better yeah. have a lot of stuff set aside. Well, I think that's why this acting thing was so, like, more people should do that. Because that seems like an adventure it in is. itself. And, so and, it's and yet like, every one of us is an actor. Yeah. Every one of us is an actor. You just got to be a good liar. That's basically what it if, is. You know, they say acting is... Uh, Living truthfully under imaginary circumstances. But I couldn't. I wow. would. I would never want to. That's pretty deep, do, man. I would never want to do that, though. Oh, it's just. It's so. So much time. Like I, they were like over here at the Crichton Theater. They're like, oh, can you do sound for uh, some play about Pacific something? And I was like, okay, yeah, I can do it for a day. Like, oh no, we need you for four weeks, right? Every day, every day. And I'm like, and I don't get paid. No. No, nope. I'm not doing that. Yeah, no. you said everyone's an actor, and I think you're right. Anyone can act. Everyone can act, but not everybody can act well. There is no. A big it's on difference, the director. Right? It's all on the so director. <laughs> it's not the actor. It's the director. <clears throat> and you know when you've got a, a good actor and someone who can't. So uh, you know, you say everyone's an actor. Maybe so, but not everyone is. is well, good and we can we can name people out <laughs> there that are big movie stars, but they're terrible actors. It's weird how that happens. Right place, right time, kind of thing, huh? Yeah, they got a they got a lucky break. Maybe the right look. Maybe they just have the looks, and that's I, carried I, them. That, that's what I got to think happened with Keanu Reeves. <laughs> oh no! Well, I think he did. A, he does a good job selecting roles now. That's like it works to his strengths. So Absolutely, it's like, mm -hmm. he you got mean, to that point. I don't. And... I have a hundred words of dialogue. I'll do that movie. I don't have to really do anything. I just have to look. That's right. Maybe so, ride one of my motorcycles yeah. in or something. You know. Wow. Well, you mentioned something about raising kids. You have. Three. Three and mm -hmm. uh, you know, as we mentioned earlier, we're we're friends with with I think it's to be your middle, yeah, child. I know, past the youngest, youngest, past the youngest, typical, but, but you're yeah, but your your daughter, I'm the youngest, mm -hmm. too. Uh, yeah. Stacy, Stacy, mm -hmm. 
uh, apparently a heck of a golfer. <laughs> you might say that. Yeah. yeah, I've heard a little bit about this. So, what? how does that happen with your kids to so like become good at something? Like, do you just, when they were young, you do the Tiger Woods dad thing, or like you're no, golfing. I didn't do the you're, Tiger. You're golfing every day. No, I did not at all. I mean, it's it's we all it started out as this is this is fun. This is a game. Yeah, you know. And in Stacy's case, she tried every other sport and she sucked at them all that's hilarious except golf and then the first time i put a golf club in her hand it just made sense it was amazing so she played collegially at texas a&m texas a&m, texas A&M full and ride. from yeah. there she has continued on a career in coaching and in golf and everything she, else right? yes yeah, she uh when she was in high school she started washing carts working at the municipal golf course when she graduated from a&m she became the general manager, and then she moved from different clubs around uh, Texas. When we moved to uh, California, she became the general manager at Elkins Lake up at, up at Huntsville. And then the guy who was the executive director of the Texas Golf Association had heard about Stacy and interviewed her for the Exe- the uh, associate director or whatever. And so she took that job, moved to Dallas, and then he left. So she's now the executive director of oh. the Texas Golf Association. But a heck of a player in her own right. Uh, let me tell you, she is, and I don't know if I'm supposed to, if I'm supposed to say this or not, but I think she's, uh, she's finally old enough. She's just turned 50, and uh, I think she's going to play in the uh, – the senior women's U.S. Open this year. That's got to be fun. Wow. And uh, she has a very good friend of hers who is a member of the LPGA Hall of Fame who's working with her. And uh, she just, she loves to compete. Yeah, Pat has said that she is really, really good. Um, you said earlier that she is a two plus two, plus two. handicap. Good yeah. grief. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like I said, her style is... If she's playing against you, even if it's me, her dear old dad, she wants her foot on my neck. Love it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Well, I get that. Maybe I can go get a from lesson you. from her. I get that kind of attitude from you. You gave her that attitude. Uh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. No surrender. Yeah. But no we, prisoners. You know, all all of my all of my kids are much more competitive than I am. Much more competitive. I I just love to. I'm competitive with myself. Right. Yeah. Right. And uh, and I tell you guys, and for all the golfers out there, you'll know, if all of a sudden you wake up one day and you can't play golf anymore. Go to Hollywood. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a frightening thought, especially if it's something you've done for a for long period of time. Buy a sawmill. Yeah, buy a sawmill yeah, yeah. and start acting. Make some pipes. Yeah, yeah. I, think that's, I think that's probably true with a uh, a lot of people who've done something their entire life, and then all of a sudden, and when it's just, taken away from them and it's not on your own terms, it can be probably well, fairly because you're, you're waiting to retire, so you can do this every day, right? And they're like, wait oh, a minute, right. I can't. Well, that's what I love, like with bowling, is you you do three games in league, right? Yeah. But then we do the tournaments; they so have to do like nine games or whatever. Or more, you're like, depending, this is hard. Well, yeah, yeah that's a sixteen pound well, you, ball. You're yeah. right. you wasted all of your good golfing years doing this <laughs> dumb acting thing. Yes, right, Gosh. right. You know, and <laughs> trying to educate kids. Yeah, what is what was up that all with about? that? <laughs> and Brian, uh, and, yeah. and Brian, of all things, yeah, yeah. I love it. Well, is there anything else you want to uh, tell us here about acting? Something interesting that we should know about you? I want well. I don't know. If interesting it is my my favorite close encounter of a third kind, fifth kind, whatever. I walked down, uh, wanted to get a cup of coffee at Starbucks. So Starbucks was about a quarter mile down the road, and so I walked down there, and it was they were slammed. I couldn't get in. So across the street, they, there was a coffee bean, and. So I went over there. They're pretty crowded, but they have a real nice outside place. And so I got my coffee, and I was uh, looking for a place to seat, sit, and all the tables were full. But there was a one uh, one table that was just one guy. He was behind a, a newspaper, and uh, he was the only guy at the table. So I said, uh, excuse me, sir, would you mind if I shared your table with him? And... Sir Anthony Hopkins put down his paper. Oh, my. And he said, no, mate, here, have a seat. 
Wow. And he stuck out his hand. He said, hi, I'm Tony. I said, uh, <laughs> I know who yes, you sir, are. <laughs> I know who you are. Wow. I'm and actually uh, playing you in a movie. <laughs> yeah. And so we got to talking. He said, I can tell by your accent that you're not from around here. I said, no, sir. I said, I'm, I'm from Texas. And he said, well, what in the world are you? He said, you live out here? And I said, yeah. He said, what are you doing out here? And I said, well, actually, I came out here to see if I could get some of the parts that you're turning down. <laughs> he, says, That's great. he said, oh, you're an actor. And I said, well, yeah. And he said, how old are you? And at the time, I think it was 60. And uh, he said, how long have you been doing this? And I said, I did my first play when I was 50. And you came out here when? And I said, four years ago when I was 56. And he paused. He said, you know, you can't do that, right? I said, what do you mean? He said, you can't wait until you're 56 and then all of a sudden decide you're an actor and come to Hollywood. He said, are you getting work? And I said, yeah. He just laughed. He said, you can't do that. Au contraire, my friend. Shows but, you what Anthony Hopkins Well, that's what I'm saying. The story, the, your story is very interesting because it's kind it of one of those things where you're like, I've never heard the statistics are not in your favor when you're talking about all this stuff. Yeah. And here it is. But but he, all he wanted to do was talk about me. And that is one of the keys, I think, to being a good actor because you're mm -hmm. always observing people and because there may be a piece of that guy someday that I want to add to a piece of me mm -hmm. in a particular role. And, you know, most actors are very, are very curious. And uh, they're really annoying. It was, <laughs> they're know. always working. Yeah. I'm like, we get it. Yeah. Yeah. Especially the kids. Nice. Like I really hate having the kids come in here. Mm. They're real loud and obnoxious. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I really hope I don't have a theater kid. Yeah. It's gonna be terrible. I did. Uh, I saw. I had. I worked with uh, Faye Dunaway and and uh, saw her have one of her legendary meltdowns on. See, I like that kind of stuff on, too. Oh, it was. It was just. It's not my kids. Really? Look at this front row seat. I'm telling you. You know, and yeah, because you hear a lot of these stories about actors and things behind the scenes, how they can be legendary a holes and and, and it's because really people nice let people. them yeah and well that's, that's what the, the great convergence of technology today it's like you can't get away with a lot of stuff especially like the the abusive behavior in hollywood like you can't get away with it anymore because people easily can record it yeah. i'm looking at christian bale he got busted for yelling at somebody on set and it was like a it right. was a tangent and right. somehow someone recorded it and right. well i i tell you one more and it and it just because I was doing this movie with uh, Faye Dunaway called The Seduction of The Seduction of Dr. Fugazi. Ooh. Is this a big screen, silver screen movie? It was. Yes. Uh, I that read, title alone makes me want to see it. I uh, uh, don't, okay? <laughs> Do not see it. Uh, I've read two reviews. Uh, one said it was the... One of the greatest art films ever made. We f we went to the Cannes Film Festival, and the other review was it was the biggest piece of caca that anybody, and which was pretty much what I. So anyway, I go up and I know I'm this got this crazy that I that I got this, this is great uh, this uh, movie with Faye Dunaway, and I'm so excited, uh, and I get on set and ready to do the first scene. And the director comes to me and said, well, we've changed the shots sequence. We're going to do this scene first. And I said, oh, okay, fine. And I go, <gasps> it's me and Faye and this other. Oh, jeez. So we get out there, and the scene goes like this. There's three of us. One girl says her, scene, her line to Faye. Faye says her line to me. I say my line back to Faye, so on and so forth. All right, so all right, roll sound. Roll camera and a, uh, uh, rehearsal and action. She says her line to Faye. Faye says her line to me. And I look at Oscar winning Faye Dunaway and I go, hana, 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 hana. <laughs> <laughs> The director goes, cut, cut. cut. I go, whoa, whoa, geez, what was that? Oh, brain toot, sorry. Uh, let's try that again, all right? Roll sound, roll camera, action. She says her line to Faye. Faye says her line to me. And I go, and nah, nah, nah. uh, we're, we're now 0 for 2. Now you're and wasting time. Yeah. Faye comes, 
into my ear and she said, sweetheart, what's the matter? And I looked at her and I said, you're Faye effing Dunaway. <laughs> That's what the matter is. Yeah. And she threw her head back and started laughing. And she and I just got on famously ever since. After that. Because That's all I it just, took. A little bit of honesty. You're, you're, you're Faye Dunaway. What do you mean what's, yeah, what's exactly. the matter is? That's, uh, I can imagine that's a difficult situ situation to be in, uh, looking across and, and, and seeing such a familiar face that you've seen on the screen before and, and, and being so intimidated. And you're like, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be on a level playing field with this person now. Um, wow. Wow. That, that, I, can, I can imagine how the words fail to come to you. Yeah, about. you know, she's got one of those little metal gold statues on her, I, you yeah. know, and I've got one, but it's plastic, and a friend of mine gave it to me. <laughs> well, Not can quite you, the Can same. you imagine those scenarios with the, the famous people, and, like, you're on a scene with Tom Cruise, and you're looking down at him. You're, you're looking at, down at You're looking down at Tom, and you're like, I believe that was see, a short let's joke. Let's see where this magic is. You know, and, I, I, bet, then, I bet that, and then he brings the magic, and you're like, okay, I get there it. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now we know why. Yeah. yeah. Well, she, she was amazing. She would walk in with a pair of opera glasses in one hand and her script in the other, and her entourage was, would be it. around. Yeah. And when the, guy, when the guy says roll sound, the glasses go here, and one guy catches them. The script goes here. Somebody else catches That's them. The Pro. consummate professional. And exactly Faye right. Dunaway has left the building. That's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, Steve, we appreciate you joining us this week, man. Well, Boys, I, I had a good you, time. You had the honorary, the honorary well, I'm not done. prestigious award of being our first. Yeah. <laughs> I got a guest. question for Steve. Hope this doesn't shut you down. No, you know what? Oh, you have another question. I have a question well, for go Steve. For it. Be mainly because, you know, with actors, they, they really have no, like, break system. They're just hundred percent going for stuff, and what I love when I meet actors, they start like there's certain ones that go into like oh the theory of acting. What school did you go to? Did you go to the New York school? Did you go to the Russian school of whatever that is? But you being starting you at the start of fifty plus, I think that's when people kind of see like this guy is not a traditional actor because the proper training wasn't there when he was younger. So how do you feel about acting jumping in? And did you identify like, oh, these people are clearly have a train of thought taught by this person? Or well, I've got the, I got the perfect response to that I was doing a play in in L.A. Uh, bus stop, mm -hmm. uh, and I was the only L.A. actor that was hired. Everybody else came from Chicago and New York, and we're taking a break one day in rehearsal and sitting around and. People, they started talking about where had, they had had their training. One guy had gone to uh, one, <laughs> one guy had gone to Juilliard. Yeah. Uh, one guy had gone. A part, one had gone to the Royal Academy. And they're going around the circle, and I'm going, "Oh God, they're going to get to me. What am I going to?" So finally, they said, "Steve, where'd you get your training?" I said, uh, "The public school classrooms of Texas." <laughs> I said, "What?" I was a school teacher. I learned. I had to learn how to make them laugh. Yeah. How to, you know, d d do all of this stuff, and you know. And I used to. I get to play. I'm a fisherman, so I'd, I'd, I'd come in. I'd go, oh god, I got a stuffed up nose this morning. I'd turn my back, and I'd reach in my pocket and I'd pull out a green plastic worm and stick it up my nose. They go, I <laughs> did, and then turn around to the kids, and I had this green slant. You know, I mean. Yeah. That's, and so they said, so anyway, this one guy who went to the Juilliard and said, you mean you've never had an acting lesson? I said, no. And he looked at me, he said, don't, they'll ruin you. Well, because yeah, that, that's, it, it, acting is one of those things that you, you really don't, there's not like a perfect answer or a perfect path. And then you get some people who are insanely talented, but you never see them. And then, like, you go to the local theaters here, you see some really talented people. Let me tell you what. This, and they're awesome. Yeah. And then you can definitely tell people who are not talented. Uh, <laughs> and I, I think it's just, I don't know. It's don't crazy. Know. It, the best directing I ever had was from Randy Wilson that very first time I stepped on stage. And I said, what do I, what do you do? And he said, go be this guy. Yeah. And that's, that's just, that's what I try to do. There you go. What, what what's your hat? What is that? Pardon me. Your hat, Lou Alary. Oh my, oh my, oh uh, Lou Alary. Uh, it's on uh, Catalina Island, and I have a dear friend and his wife who lived on a fifty-six foot lovely boat out there, what? 
and we go out there for a, a week at a time and uh this is just a great little bar there and uh yeah okay i was wondering I didn't, I didn't know. So. Yeah, you, there may have been another golden story in there. You never know. Yeah, well, there probably is. Yeah, me one and Dre it. were out on this boat one we time. We had to drink 14 beers <laughs> <laughs> while you doing tequila know. shots. I know. It makes you sound like I'm a lush, but that's, that's not true. That's the only way I get that hat. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> so. right. That, the hat, the, that and $12, and, and you get the hat, <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's great. Well, thank you so much for being with thank us. Thank you for uh, having me, fellas. What, what does the future it. look like for you? What what what's the next? You're going to be an astronaut or something? Like uh, I feel like there's something more in the, the tank. You know, I I don't know. You know, I survived this whole heart thing, and and so uh, the, the doc said you can do whatever you want to do, and so I don't know what I want to do. So now you're going to be an Iron Man? No, I mean, I'm, I think Becky and I are just going to get in this new motor on that we haven't driven anywhere yet. Yeah, and just go and just go and just be gone. Well, you're welcome back to the show anytime. I may you may get a, a text from me saying come back in. We just uh, we want to talk me again, and I'll tell you some, some more adventures I'll... from Steve Larkin in Hollywood. <laughs> well, we should just Thanks. get Pat on here and compare them the whole time. Well, yeah, Pat. Yeah, we to put us on together. Oh, yeah. we'll see. Maybe we'll have to put that together. I like Pat a lot. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> He clearly had done a good job raising yeah. kids. So well, we're very, we got lucky. It's hard, as everybody knows, raising good kids is not easy, and it's it's just hard. And Brian, <laughs> you, what's your thing with Brian? <laughs> just, I just man? Love, I love I love, I have a bunch of friends that are from there, and I love Brian. <laughs> Try Mayflower, Arkansas. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's a real place. I think I've heard of that place. Yeah, well. How many people, like 2,000 people live there or something yeah, like that? Yeah, a little bitty tiny. On, yeah. Lake, on Lake Conway. Yeah. Mayfire. I love it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Steve. Thank and uh, I look forward to checking out these movies, especially The Seduction of Dr. Fugazi. It looks insane. <sighs> I like the stripper insane. movie. We're going we're gonna to have a whole movie thing. Uh, That's right. We're going to have a Steve Larkin watch it if here. You, yeah, if you can find him, <laughs> good luck. And, and if you can, I'll bring my copy over. That's funny. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks. Well, thanks again, everyone, audience of one. Thank you for listening. Wednesdays, 10 a.m., uh, right here on Conroe's 106.1, 104.5, and IRLoneStar.com. Of course, you're going to make fun of me. YouTube, Facebook, Apple Podcasts. Audience of one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Bye, guys. Until next week. The saga continues. This I won't get into.